Hi, I'm Phil, and I'm on my grey gap year, and welcome to York. The city of York is one of Britain's great historic cities, starting with the Romans who built their northern stronghold here in 92 AD. The Angles and the Saxons knew it as Eafuwerk, known as Jorvik to the Viking invaders that came and settled here. Fast forward about a thousand years and today York is a top UK tourist destination. It's steeped in history and these are my top five things to do in York. Number five, exploring old and historic pubs. York is said to have more pubs than there are days in the year and I can well believe it. Enjoying an afternoon in a pub beer garden in the English summer is one of my favourite things to do and York has some of the best there are to explore. As you walk around York you'll find most pubs are in old historic buildings with more than one of them claiming to be the oldest, more than one of them claiming to be the most haunted. And another interesting fact is that Guy Fawkes of Gunpowder Plot fame was born and raised in York so there's more than a few alehouses claiming to have Fawkes as a past regular. There's even a blue plaque on the Guy Fawkes Inn, marketing at its finest. Not to be outdone, the Red Lion claims that the famous highwayman Dick Turpin drank there and once escaped from a window. Some of my favourite pubs to visit include the Three-Legged Mare, which is the first of three brilliant pubs that all live on the same short street running from the Minster to Bootham Bar. One joyous thing about the Three-Legged Mare is its local nickname, the Wonky Donkey. And a few doors down is the Eagle and Child, which is a Grey 2 listed timber framed building beautiful interior, lovely little courtyard at the rear and then keep going down at the end of High Peter Gate right next to Bootham Bar is the Fat Badger which used to be called the Lamb and Lion. It's got old oak panelling, fantastic beer and a brilliant beer garden with views of the Minster. Ye Old Star Inn claims to be the oldest pub in York and as you'd expect more oak panelling, lovely little shaded courtyard. The Golden Fleece claims to be the most haunted pub in York with no less than five ghosts and an appearance on the most haunted TV show. A charming long thin pub with a courtyard beer garden at the rear. The Habit probably wins Battle of the Beer Gardens with this wonderful rooftop terrace. It's a sun trap with fantastic views of the Minster. It's a great place to enjoy the English summer with a cold lemonade or maybe a rum and coke. And it also has some of the friendliest staff in York. It is one of my all time favourites. But that accolade goes to the Bluebell. It's a small pub with well kept real ales and a cosy bar with pork pies. Now I love the house rules here. No swearing, no groups, no under 18s and no mobile phone noise. You'll have to make do with just chatting to a friendly local at the next table. And those are just a few of the many excellent pubs in York. I could make a video just about pubs in York. But I fear it would get a bit boring uh, and exploring them really is part of the fun. York Centre is quite small and if you book a hotel within the old city walls then all of these pubs are within walking distance so no need for a designated driver. If you would like to know more about the pubs of York then leave me a comment. Also do let me know if you have a favourite pub in York. I am planning more visits there and would love to try out your favourite pub and then we can compare notes. Number four, walking the walls of York. The first walls in York were built as part as the Roman fort in 71 AD, but most of the walls around York now date from the 13th century and were built on the older earth banks. Some were built more recently than that, but regardless, walking the walls is a fabulous thing to do. The best place to start is from Bootham Bar, which is a short stroll from the Minster down to High Petergate. From here, you can walk the walls to Robin Hood Tower and then on to Monk Bar. This section follows the walls of the old Roman fort and if you do only have a short time in York then walk this section and you're walking in the footsteps of Roman soldiers from 2000 years ago. It should take you less than 30 minutes with time for a selfie and you can gaze in wonder at the original Roman footings. If you have the time you really should think about walking the entire length of the walls. It, it takes about three or four hours to really enjoy the experience. To quickly clear up any confusion about names, many of the roads in York are named Gate, Dean Gate, Stone Gate, Swine Gate. And in this case, Gate comes from the Norse word Garter, which means road. So Stone Gate means Stone Road. To add to the confusion, the actual city gates are called bars. We just started our walk at Bootham Bar. And this comes from the type of wooden barred gate that would have been used just to control traffic during the day. So in York, 
Bar means gate and gate means road. If you're walking the full circuit, you'll find that there are actually two sections that don't have any walls. Past Monk's Bar, the walls end at the Foss River. So follow the Foss to Red Tower to continue with the walk. Now you might want to put Red Tower into Google Maps to save any missteps. From Red Tower, walk the walls until the walls end again at Fishergate Post and Tower. From here, walk along Tower Street crossing the Foss and then over Skeldergate Bridge, which crosses the Ouse. The walls start again then at Bailey Hill. As you walk this second short section that doesn't have walls, you'll be walking near York Castle and Clifford's Tower. So if you're planning on climbing Clifford's Tower, factor in some time and do it as part of your wall walk. Continuing our walk from Bailey Hill, you'll come to the fourth main gate on the wall walk, Micklegate Bar. Micklegate Bar was the main gateway into York, hosting royal processions and the spiked heads of traitors. There has been a gate on this site since the Roman period, with the earliest surviving piece of the current gateway dating from the 12th century. Interestingly, people used to live in Micklegate Bar from as early as 1195, with the last residents moving out in 1918. If you're short of time, then this is the start of a second popular part of the walls. Walk from Micklegate Bar round towards a station, ending by the river. This provides some excellent views of York with the minster in the background. Just over the river, turn left into the museum gardens and look for the multi-angular tower. This tower marks a spot at the southwest corner of the old Roman fort, which gives you some perspective of the size and scale of that fort. And one last tip for wall walkers, my favourite place to take a break is at Warmgate Bar Coffee Shop. It's got tables dotted around the Barbican and it's a lovely place to sit. Imagine trying to take this gate by force. Once you've succeeded in breaking through the first gate, you charge into the long Barbican with attackers raining down missiles while you busily try and break down the second gate. Number three, Clifford's Tower. Clifford's Tower is the fortified keep of York Castle, built on the site of the original Moat and Bailey Castle, which was built by William of Normandy after he marched north in 1068. The tower that stands today was built in the 13th century, but there's no historical date for its completion. It's somewhere between 1245 and 1290. Today, walk up the long steep steps to walk into the safety of the thick stone walls of Clifford's Tower. Read about the history of the keep and climb the stairs to enjoy the views. If you're walking the full circuit of the wall walk, then you will walk past York Castle and Clifford's Tower, so it makes sense to see them both together if you can plan it that way. Number two, York Minster. York Minster is the big cathedral that makes teeny tiny York into the northern powerhouse of a city. It's the third largest cathedral in the UK and the largest Gothic cathedral in Northern Europe. The first church at this site was in 670 AD. This is a few hundred years before the time of Alfred the Great and before England was even a thing. A couple of practicalities to be aware of. The longest lines form when the Minster first opens and in peak season it will remain long all morning. What isn't apparent is there's absolutely no need for anyone to line up and pay at the door unless you just love wasting your weekend standing in a line. You can easily beat these long slow lines by buying your ticket online which then gives you free fast track entry. Everyone in the line with a smartphone and a credit card can just buy their ticket on the phone and walk in. As you walk around the Minster, make sure you look up. Don't forget to take some time at each of the huge stained glass windows. The Great East Window underwent a 10 year restoration which was completed in 2018. The window tells the story of the beginning and end of all things. The rose window in the south transept is often overlooked and commemorates the union between House Lancaster and House York, thus ending the War of the Roses. The crypt contains original Roman footings from the fort that founded York and the famous doomstone that survives from the first Norman minster. This is from the time of fire and brimstone Christianity. It shows the mouth of hell and you can see lost souls being tortured by demons. If you have the energy and the fitness to climb the 275 steps to the top of the Minster Tower, then you will be rewarded with spectacular views. A word of warning, there is no smoking allowed on the tower tour, a sensible rule given the history of fire at the cathedral. But I have to wonder which smoker is able to climb 275 steps while smoking. If you complete the tower climb, you're entitled to purchase a special badge to commemorate your climb. It sounds silly, but after the climb, you really feel like you've earned it.
And finally, my number one thing to do in York will be revealed after I kindly ask you to consider giving me a like if you've enjoyed the video. Perhaps you could leave me a comment regarding an improvement if you haven't liked the video quite so much. So then my number one thing to do in York is the Shambles. The Shambles is one of the world's best preserved medieval streets with some of the buildings dating back to the 14th century. It's a must see in York, but it does get very crowded. So if you come nice and early in the morning, you'll get the Shambles all to yourself. There'll be a few traders setting up and that kind of thing. But generally speaking, you really get to see the beauty and you also get to explore these little alleyways which lead through to the market at the back. Uh, at the back here, this is where all of the, um, this is where the actual slaughterhouses would have been, uh, this, this market behind. So all the slaughterhouses have now been knocked down and that makes way for the Shambles Market. Shambles is definitely best enjoyed starting at the bottom and then walking up the street towards the cathedral in the old town. When you're walking the direction that I'm actually walking right now, you're walking towards a blue Greg sign and it kind of kills the illusion a little bit. In modern British language, a shambles is something that's a chaotic mess. But in medieval English, a shambles was an open air slaughterhouse and meat market. And this is where the street gets its name. It was the meat district of Old York. So you can see some of the old meat shelves that the meat would have been placed upon for sale. And you can also see hooks above the window. And this is a few shops all the way down still have this. You can imagine the noise and the mess that this would have created and it doesn't take too much imagination to see how our modern meaning for shambles came about. It's said that the shambles uh, inspired JK Rowling for Diagon Alley uh, and, and as you walk down you can kind of see why people think that. Unfortunately JK Rowling herself has said this is totally false. However, that doesn't stop people opening up shops that are Harry Potter themed and potion themed and my personal favourite is right here, it is the shop that must not be named. So those are my top five things to do in York. What's your favourite thing to do in York? Let me know in the comments below and perhaps you consider giving me a like or even subscribing to the channel to get notifications of other upcoming videos. So thank you for watching and joining me on my grey gap year. Thank you.